for everybody. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, Irish spirit. McMahon's of Luxembourg, where the best home for our furniture is yours. Cobison Buses, family pride in every ride. North Star Dental Group, changing your life by changing your smile. Dandred on West Mason, one low price, always. And Simon's Specialty Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese. Field at the Kiwani Memorial Sports Complex, it's time for the season opener of the TV32 Sports Showdown. Tonight, it's a non-conference matchup as the Kiel Raiders visit the Kiwani Storm. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Ted Stefaniak alongside John Mino. Hello, Teddy. Tell you what, season opener couldn't be any better when you think about where we were last year. 2021 for a season opener. Coming off of COVID, things were kind of strange you know at what that to time. Expect. It's good to be back to normal. Feels like normal. It really it? is. So what better place to start it off than Kiwani, a place we've come to for so many years. We're really welcome here. All the fans are welcome here. It's just a fun, fun place to play a high school football game, especially this time of year. And we'll be talking about Matunki yes, in we, a little bit. You, but let's, right, we let's talk about Kiel. Of okay. course, this is, a, this is a really good team. Uh, they've got a younger coach in, yep. just in his third year, David Eswine, but he's got some players to work with this season. He does. He's got some kids coming back, but it's one of those things where some of these kids are still pretty young and they'll be playing both ways. A couple of years ago, we were doing Kiwani against Kiel right here. That Kiel team went to the state championship game. They were really something. These kids were younger, but they saw the glory that you get when you're a big-time football star in a small town. And I guarantee you, these kids watched and learned and said, hey, give us a couple of years. We want to be those guys. Yeah, Kiel plays out of the Eastern Wisconsin Conference. Kiwani, however, they play in the Packerland Conference. They're the defending champs, and they've got some experience coming back. Legendary sports experience in the Packerland Conference yeah. for these fellas. I'll tell you what, they've had a program that's been so good over the years. Had a really nice team last year. Got some returning starters this year that look to be really good, including a quarterback that is very dynamic. We'll stay here. <laughs> So our national anthem gets us ready. Absolutely. For week one of the high school football season. Tell me you don't get goosebumps when you hear that first every national anthem of the season. Every time. Every time. Every time. So we're getting ready to get this first game underway here in Kiwani. John, it is a beautiful night. Perfect. Tell you what, the uh, Raiders of Kiel will be wearing uh, their white jerseys tonight while Kiwani is in a purple jersey. Purple Ensemble. Yeah. Tell you what, for a weather check, let's uh, head down to our sideline reporter. we got a sideline reporter. Uh, we're big time. This year. Yeah, Ben we're Boken, what do you got for us, bud? All right, well, we'll... Uh, <laughs> ben didn't have a lot to say we're, we're having, First game, that's all right, Ben. Don't worry we'll, about it. When we get connection, uh, let, let us know when we've got connections uh, with uh, Ben down there. But. <laughs> Maybe it was too tough a question to start off yeah, with. Weather, weather. <laughs> Do we have Ben yet? Let's, let's try to... No, we don't have Ben. Okay, well, we'll check back in with Ben later. <laughs> yes, we will. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> he looked, hey, I'll tell you what, Ben looked like he was ready to go. He, he was, was totally ready to go. He had his game face on. Couldn't hear us. Are you kidding me? He was rocking. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keel will... Uh, get things started here by kicking off to Kiwani. Of course, mentioned, you know, Kiel, the last two times these guys have played, Kiel came away with the win. But you go back to the early 2000s, Kiwani had a pretty good run against these Oh, guys. no, quite. Well, those are glory days for Kiwani. I mean, they don't have many non-glory days. But we did that game a couple of years ago right here. It was a good first half. Remember that? And then Kiel just tore him apart in the second half. You like this kicker from Kiel as well. Yeah, I was watching Tate him in the game. Wow, he's got a leg. And the season is underway, 2022 Sports Showdown. This one taken at the goal line. 
And brought out to the 20. Through a tackle and some room at the 30. Now to the 40. One man to beat trying to get around. He's oh, not oh, going he to. Does. 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. We're going to open up the season with a kickoff return touchdown. Owen oh, Carlson. Wow. And that was basically 100 yards because that kick carried him. His foot was right on the goal line. A 100-yard kickoff return to start the 2022 season. Well, <laughs> How do you top that? You don't. That was incredible. Wow. Oh Boy, watch. He just takes up that right seam take. But see that right at the going. His back left foot was at the goal line. So I think officially you got to say 100 yards. Got a great block right there. Made a nice move right there. Basically untouched 100 yards for the score. What a way to start a season. I would say so. My goodness. That's got to be a first. I mean, we've been doing these games since 1954. I, I, and I think we're going to ease into this one, John. I know, right? <laughs> wow. High snap. So the extra point is and no, no good. good. No good. So it is 6 nothing, Kiwani. And just like that, well, let's take a break. <laughs> we, we've worked to get four. Then let's check seconds. in the weather. <laughs> we'll try to check in with Ben when we come back. You're watching Showdown. These businesses are proud to support the Kiwani Storm. Novak Agency, for all your insurance needs. Tish Mills Farm Center, contact us for all your feed, seed, and fertilizer needs. Cunup Meats, proud supporters of Kiwani Athletics. Rooster's Bar, if you're in downtown Kiwani, stop in for a good time. Brian Jagodinsky, we insure the American family. That's what we do best. Back at Kiwani, where it is six to nothing. Fourteen seconds into this one, Johnny. I couldn't run 100 yards in 14 seconds with like just track shoes on and nobody in front of me and things like that. And I'll tell you what, that was without question the greatest opening play we've ever seen in all the games we've done. But what a huge boost for a Kiwani team coming in. You know, you, you always got those butterflies, those nerves. You know, the first time you're really hitting hard, and to open it like that, you couldn't ask for anything better, obviously. Yeah. Let's see if Keel can answer. So Maddox Miller on the kickoff for Kiwani. This one fielded at about the 20-yard line right up the gut. Nice little return here out to the 40-yard line. Number 22 for Keel on the return, Charlie Fries. 6'2", 170-pound wide receiver. Well, I remember the, team, the Keel team we saw a couple of years ago was old school. Their coach was old school. Remember that? I mean, he was like, you know what? We line up right, we hit him in the mouth, and we move on. It was the that. The old Keel coach. The old Keel yeah, coach. Mike Dressler. Yep. Who is still involved with the program. Right. So I'm sure there's still, what I'm saying is I, there's still a little bit of his attitude with the program. So Connor Faust is the quarterback. Where's number four for Keel? They give it to the right back. Up the middle. Up the middle. Ben Versi. We're going to be calling Connor's name quite a bit tonight. Senior running back. Gain him about four. Second and six from the 43. Good play to just kind of get your, you know, the emotions were high, all those things. Let's just settle down now and play, you know, our normal type of football. Can you want any, or excuse me, keel football. Well, when you, when you have a start like that, I mean, that, that's the only thing you can do is just catch your breath. <laughs> yep. Go back to what you... We're planning to do. Low snap this time. Ben Versi again this time up the middle again, and he's got a first down. Nice little run for the Raiders. Got some nice blocking up there. Ryan Schad, just a sophomore, 5'11", 210 pounds, number 55, did a nice job leading the way up the right side over right guard. Got the block there. Use his legs to gain a few more. Two good plays to start off the ball game for Keel. So fresh set of downs. Ball sitting on the 48-yard line. Another, Another low little, snap. Yeah, Ben Versi again will try that left side. This time picks up a maybe a yard, but that Kiwani defense ready for him that time. Yeah, pretty good hit. Mitchell Thompson coming up, quarterback, linebacker. Good-sized kid came up and helped make the stop, and I'm going to hold him to a gain of one. So it's been all Ben Versi opening series, second and nine. And again, you may see quite a bit of Connor tonight. 22 carries, 99 rush yards. So 
you know, they, they had some other players last year that have graduated, and then it's the next man up when you Absolutely. come into a season like this. And Versa, you'll see them on both sides of the ball, also a linebacker. To the air this time they go. Connects with a man and a gain of about four yards on that pass. Not a bad throw. He put that one on a rope. Maddox Miller came up to make the stop, number 36, immediately. Thought that one had a chance to take it down the sideline. Held him to a gain of about five. Third and a and long four. Can I say it for the first time of the year? What you got? Are Port, you going to say it already? Four down territory. Well, we've already had a touchdown. I know. I might as well. Why waste any time, Teddy? Let's just jump right in. Third and five. Put a man in motion. Quarterback keeper. And Faust. Look at that first time. Close. A little bit short. short. Yeah. Yep. But a yard short. So it'll be fourth down from about the 38. 39. 39. See where they mark it. Yeah, 39. Got to go for it here. Big play for the Keel offense. Got to think all eyes will be on that main man in the backfield. And Bruce, you got uh, receivers split to the left and right. And go deep into the count here from the shotgun. Snap, Benversi hit in the backfield and brought down. Turnover on downs. Kiwani defense up to the task. Big stop. Well, while well, we get a uh, DJ Eccles coming up to make that stop. Kind of a slow developing play. Let's head down to the sideline. Ben Boken checking on the weather here. Yeah, guys, I talked with NBC26 chief meteorologist Cameron Moreland before this game. He told me there's a chance of some storms, and there's some storms in the area, but overall, it's supposed to be a beautiful night. Small, small showers, thunderstorms around the area, but temperature has dropped about 10 degrees over the past couple hours now, and that's due to a wind breeze, according to uh, chief meteorologist Cameron Moreland. But overall, it looks like the guys are in comfortable conditions as of right now, and field conditions are looking good. Not a raindrop in the sky, though some clouds are starting to move in, but it's looking good so far. But I'll toss you guys back in back in the booth. All right. Thanks, Ben. I'll tell you what, we just almost witnessed about a 60-yard touchdown play on their second play from scrimmage. Caleb Schaller, number five, came on a swing pass and went deep, was wide open, but got overthrown on that play. That would have been six without question. Yeah, Kiwani taking over at... Their own 41-yard line. Second play of the down. Hit in the backfield on, for a loss that time. Bryce Gullickson coming up to make the stop. That'll be a loss. Bring up third down. Just a little toss. Almost like the old Packer sweep, and he just shot the gap right there. Did Gullickson. Just made a nice play. You know what that was? That was a read. He read that guard, and as soon as he saw him pull out, he just... Boom, just blew through that hole. And that was Owen Carlson on the run that time. He's the guy He's that finally just caught his breath, right? 100-yard <laughs> kickoff return to open the game. So a third and 12 now. Ball back to the 39-yard line. Thompson going to center this time. There's two receivers this time to the right. Looking He's got to a the man. Right. Over the top, and this time it goes out of bounds. You know, ended up with two receivers in almost the exact same spot that time. Schaller and Miller both sort of drifted together, which made it easier for the defensive backs. At first, I thought he had Schaller once again open, but he hesitated. He was under some pressure rolling around, didn't put the touch on it he wanted to. Could have put a little bit more air under it. So with 4th and 12 here, deep in your own territory, punting situation for the Storm. Trying to make sure they got the right personnel. Yeah. So week one, right? Absolutely. For us, too. <laughs> <laughs> so Mitchell Thompson, the quarterback, also the punter. He was an all-conference. Also defensive back. <laughs> he was all-conference quarterback and punter last season in the Packerland Conference. He doesn't come off the old booming punt. This one fielded at 25 to 6. And Did he keep his feet? Or? Yeah, done. I think he went he down. He went down. <laughs> So yep. <laughs> that's where he will be when we come back. There is a timeout on the field, so we'll step away. This is Showdown. So first and 10, ball on the 26-yard line for the Keel Raiders. Looking for their first points of the night. And a good little run here. 
once again. Boy, he's a tough runner. Yeah. Ben Versi, Connor Ben Versi. Not a big guy, five foot six, hundred and fifty pounds, but that low center of gravity, and it takes a heck of a pop to knock him off his legs. Just kind of gets those shoulders down low. Got the strong legs. Takes the pop there, bounces back for more, drives for an extra three yards. That's a tough seven-yard run right there. I've seen a couple of missed tackles already in this game. Some of the things that the, the coaches will certainly be yeah, no <laughs> question. keeping an eye on come next practice. Under seven minutes to go in this first quarter. Faust. Lots of time. Down the field. Let's one go. Coverage. And just out. outshot his man, Colin Gussie. Good coverage on the part of Kiwani, though. There was nobody really open. But that's a tall receiver he was going after. There he's six, or excuse me, it's not a tall receiver. But uh, he still had a chance for it by out jumping the defensive back. And lots of time. Nice job of the Keel offensive line that time, giving him plenty of time to throw. Gussie. Listed as a fullback. Looking for him down the field that time. So third and three. Not bad size, 5'11", 185. So Keel trying to keep this drive alive. They're turning over on downs their first series. Third and three from the 33. Threes are wild here, John. Benversi, they fake this time. Faust will keep it himself. And his mouth, a wall. <laughs> Who was oh, that? Big event? number 78 just came in and did a wallop. Braxton Rhea comes in tough and stops him short. He just takes him down right there. I think that was 84 oh, Sawyer Prebeck. For Sawyer Prebeck, I'm sorry. So Big hit. Another fourth and short here. A fourth and one from the 35, and Keel's going to. It's not four down territory, Teddy. <laughs> it's not four down territory. So Ooh, Harlan has knows. to go down to grab that one. Gets the punt off, and this one will bounce at about the 36-yard line and go out of bounds. So we'll step away. You're watching Showdown on TV 32. Gandrud West Mason Value Center makes navigating today's used car market easy. Find only quality pre-owned vehicles on our lot, safety inspected and reconditioned for the roads ahead. Our non-commissioned sales staff help you maintain your budget goals by guiding you to the right vehicle at one low price. And we help you stay on track by offering competitive financing options. It's that easy. Purchase your next vehicle with confidence from Gandrud West Mason Value Center. First and 10 on the 32-yard line as Kiwani goes to work once again. Fumble. Loose ball. Still Scramble loose. Ford, who's got it? Keel says they've got it. We'll wait for the official word. And they do. Keel ends up recovering the fumble. That thing came out early. I mean, it, even without a hit, that thing started popping out. Take another look at it here, Teddy. So just a, yeah, just never got the handle on it. Almost looked like the quarterback was fading away a little bit as he held it out there, and the running back just never got it in the old bread basket. So big turnover for Keel right here on the 34-yard line of Kiwani. It's been Connor Binversi for most of this first quarter. And he lines up in the backfield once again. He'll fake this time. Faust scrambles to his left this time. He wants to go deep to the corner, looking inside, and oh, it is caught. What a, what a catch, wow. yes. What an incredible catch. Charlie Fries. Charlie Fries used all of his six-foot-two-inch body to go up and haul that one down. Wow, what a big play for Keel. What a big catch for Fries in traffic. Uh-oh, penalty, though. Coming back, Ted. A hold. hold against Keel. Mm. Mm -hmm. That stings. Well, maybe we can take a, take a <laughs> look and see if we can see it here, but that'll wipe out a 34-yard touchdown pass from Faust to Fries. You know, one thing Faust does is he does a nice job giving his receivers a chance. Maybe there. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to tell. Didn't, didn't see anything from that angle, right. but, but the officials definitely saw it, so that'll... Back him up another 10 yards, wipe the six points off the board. But you know what, Faust, I mean, he gives it a lot of air. Puts a lot of air, and it gives his taller receivers a chance to go up and get it. Fries so first and 20 super now. Super fast, so 
gets by that defense, and then Denversi now goes to work on this first and 20. Gain of about two. Working right. up to the 44-yard line. I would think we'd get a chance to see Faust with that arm again. I was watching him pregame. He throws a nice ball, throws a really nice ball. So a gain of one on that. Second and 19 coming up from the 43-yard line in Kiwani territory. I think we'll see play something like that in this series. It's just too much to recover from. On their, another low snap, I'll tell you what. Faust just trying to save it and he couldn't do it. Down. Number yeah. 22, Owen Carlson got in there real quick. Almost all these snaps have been low. Yeah. Almost every one. So at heart, for a quarterback, that's so tough to try to start a play when you're reaching down and you're, your eyes off the line of scrimmage. It messes up the timing. Everything, yep. So they just got to get those snaps up. So now a third and 24 heading the wrong way. Yep, sitting on the 48-yard line. So they went from 6-6 six, six tie <laughs> to third and 24. And Faust looking. Yeah, looks to the left. Here Trouble. comes pressure again. Brought down, and he will get rid of it. Once again, number 22, Owen Carlson going over there. Taking him down. Are they giving it the incompletion? Not that it matters too much, but are they saying he was in the grasp and down? I think he was down. So, and that's what they say. So, fourth and 24 from their own 47 oh, it's, yard line. It's more than that now. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did say it for, okay. Yeah. They did say he was down, yep. They're sitting back on their own 48. Oh, 48, yard line now, yep. So. Yeah, we're going to have to break out the calculator oh boy, for this one, John. 10, 10 30, 30-something. 30 Hartlove, a uh -oh. high snap. Well, you didn't want to know a low snap, That's right. John. And now Kiwani takes advantage of the miscue, and they are going to have terrific field position sitting on the 25-yard line of Keel. Number 25, Zach Kittleson came in. Here's another look at it, Made John. the stop. But you're right, the snaps were all low, so I'm sure they talked to him, mm. said get him up, and... That's what happened. So they'll spot it at the 24. Three forty-three remaining in this first quarter. And fumble. Carlson, did they get it again? And they did. Keel got it back. What a big play by number 83, Garrett Mons. Watch 83. Just as a, well, this is the uh, snap over the head for the punt. Of course, in high school, you can't pick that up and run on it. Go back to the fumble here for a moment. Let's see. But anyway, it was Grant Mons did a really great job staying really stout at the line of scrimmage, not getting any ground, knocking the ball out, and recovering it. So big play for Keel. Some big plays back and forth in the swing of this ball game. Well, so we'll start here on the 24-yard line for Keel with 3.37 to go in this wild first quarter. Ben Versi again. Taken down quick by big number 78, Braxton Reha. Making the stop. Reha, just a big body out there. Just a junior. He's second so. and 11 coming up on the Gandrid Chevrolet down and distance marker. Feels like Heel has been playing uphill for quite a while now, hasn't it? <laughs> Got to get some momentum going downhill again. From the 23. Faust, the shotgun. Oh, reverse. Yep. Little reverse here up the middle, and you're going to be very close to a first down, John. That was a nice little inside reverse that time. I thought the ball was loose for a second, to be honest with you. Colin Gussie is the one who ended up with it. The handoff first goes to, of course, number 23, Minversi, and then the inside handoff back. And it's enough for a first down, so he, gained, he needed 11, gained about 12. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to get a little out of the ordinary, just to get some rhythm back. 
When things aren't working well, you just got to pull something out of the bag of tricks. Well, try to make something good happen. Something. You've just seen some positive plays. <laughs> had that touchdown called back. So that was a first down. Ball to the 34, and they'll try the right side. Been Versi with the carry. First hit over there by Sawyer Prebeck. Good for about four yards. Yep. Yeah. Not a bad play. He's a good first down runner. You know, you get that anything over like three and a half to four yards is a positive play, especially four. Four is all you really expect and hope for, and a, just a dive over the right tackle on first down. Well, and we've seen him in this first quarter kind of set up the pass with these run plays. Right, on the rollouts. Second and six, Ben Versi again. And this time, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Matthew Bader, number 50, the first guy to wrap him up for very little gain. In maybe, fact, a loss, a about a yard. Loss, yep. Huh? Nice job that time by Bader shedding his block, coming up. Right there, just kind of corrals him, takes him down. Gets some help, of course, from 15, Mitchell Thompson, who's in on a lot of plays. He, I don't think he comes off the field. It's maybe kickoffs. Probably he's not on kickoff coverage. Third and seven. Faust goes to the air and has a man. Looking for the first down. Spins and gets there. That time it looks like fries again. Yeah, it looks like he's shaken up a little bit. So he gets up, coming back. But Charlie Fries did a nice job that time. And it was that spin. Yeah, he's leaving the ball game. I didn't like the way he came down on that shoulder. If you can see it here. But it was that spin move right there. That got him the first down, then all the weight came down that left shoulder. Mm. Well, hopefully he's going to be all right. right. Honorable mention defensive back last season. 4 5 40. Wow. Top 10 at the WFCA combine this year. Good six yard, five, six yard pickup that time. Nice run. Bryce Gullickson, number 22. Owen Carlson coming up to make the stop. Game of about five. Second and five from the Kiwani 49. And that might have been the last play of the first quarter. If they want to let it run down and catch their breath. And I think they are with the quarterback. Yeah, no real advantage uh, from a win perspective. No, none whatsoever. There's, there is a breeze, but. Good first quarter. Fun. Exciting first quarter. <laughs> a lot of, stu a lot of stuff play. happening. Let's just put it that way. A lot of things happening. Let's take a break. We'll recap when we come back. This is Showdown. Every time a team reaches the opponent's 20-yard line, they're in the Gallagher's Pizza Red Zone. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, Irish spirit, now with locations in Swamico and De Pere, as well as two locations in Green Bay on West Mason Street and Webster Avenue. And we haven't seen anybody yet in the red zone, Johnny. We have not. As we get set to start the second quarter We've with Kiwani leading Keel 6-0. We've seen them pass through the red zone. Yes, we have. <laughs> we haven't seen him stop in the red zone. Ted Stefaniak, John Mino with you on the call tonight as we open up week one of the high school football season. Keel and Kiwani, we thank both teams, John, for moving their game from Friday night to Thursday night to avoid a conflict with the Packers preseason game tomorrow night. So. Well, that one's stuffed out. I'm getting tired of calling the number 22 Owen Carlson, but he's all over the field. Of course, he started out the ball game with a 100-yard kickoff return. He's just been dynamite on defense throughout this entire first half. So third and eight now with a three-yard loss that time. They snuffed out that play immediately. There are a bunch of purple shirts right in the face of the running back that time. Looking for a little rollout action here. Third and long here, midfield. Roll right, two receivers on the right-hand side. Third and eight. Look at Straight right. back. Just in the pocket, but in trouble, and here come the storm. Yeah, there were a bunch of them. Again, 22 got in the middle of it. He kind of chased him out of the pocket. He was the first one to get hands on him. That's the first time we've seen a straight drop back pass. I was expecting something a little bit more of the bootleg type action on the right-hand side. Patrick Latour, our crew chief tonight. We're in the white hat, joined by Patrick Clemo, Don Dumas, Luke Doberstein, and Daniel Jensen tonight are officiating crew. 
We were down there talking to those guys before. Absolutely. Giving them some pointers, I think. A couple of pointers. They appreciate that. I've been told many times those guys how much they, how much it's helped them in their development. <laughs> <laughs> what not to do. <laughs> Fourth and 16, a low snap once again, but a good punt. And fielded at the 30-yard line through a hole and a big return here across the 50-yard line and into Keel territory. That's where the storm will start when we come back. This is Showdown. Tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Simon's Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese Little Shoot. Longtime followers of Showdown. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got some great sponsors back with us again this year, and you, you, you hear a lot of the same sponsors Love year it. after year. So Glad to hear it. They're going to bring the smoked trout this year? Well, well, we'll find out. All right. Get a little closer to the valley. Little Shoot. Thompson over the top, throws a nice ball, and has a man, and oh, that is incomplete. Well, the officials took a good long time to yeah, look at that, did. just like we did. We thought maybe did he, Have did he hang on to it. That was a beautiful ball. I'll tell you what, that's as good of a pass from Mitchell Thompson as you'll ever ask for. Watch so, this. Lays it out here perfectly. Stands strong in the pocket. Beautiful throw. I think it might have gotten knocked out. The defensive back there, Harrison Zorn, may have gotten his left hand in there just as the receiver was trying to pull it in. I think that's what happened there. I think Zorn used some of that 4-7 speed you were yeah. talking about and closed really quick. Yeah. But that was a beautiful ball the way he yeah. laid it out there. But went for it on fourth and one, went for yep. the home run ball. Yep. So Keel takes over on downs. Raiders go back to work, trailing by six. I think he dropped it. Yep. Tender receiver, yeah, Trey, Trey Bartz. Bartz. Bartz had to come back for that one. So both teams going to the air a little bit here. Yeah, Bartz, another one of these fantastic athletes. Started as a freshman last year and qualified for state track. Wow. That's a good way to start That's a not bad high school career. The speed on that team, huh? Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. they got to put it to better use here so far, though, tonight. Still with a goose egg with 6.48 to go in the second quarter. Ben Versi. Not Outside much there. Yeah. Getting a yard maybe. Well, if you remember when we did this matchup in 2019, right. it was a terrific first half. Yep. Back and with forth. With big plays, went. remember? Big Huge plays. plays. Yep. Second half, Keel had, took over. Keel had a great quarterback yeah. that year. He's playing college football now at Carthage, I Mitchell believe. Mitchell Mahler. Yep. Heard he was playing some tight end down there. Yeah, that was a nice keel team. Really well coached. Made it Went to deep state in the that playoffs. season. Yep. Yeah, 2019 season. State runner up. So third and ten. Ball sitting on that 26 yard line. Faust screen. Has that been Versi again? And it is. Yes, it is. Be short of the first down. Bring up fourth down. You get 550 and counting. First screen that we've seen for the ball game. Yeah, kind of a dangerous screen. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Jump ball. Yeah, that could have been tipped in uh, disaster. All right, good for seven yards, but still fourth and three. So Owen Carlson deep for Kiwani. He, of course, started out the ball game with that 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Keep an eye on him. Only points of the night so far. Tate Hartlub. The punter. Whoa, nice hit 37. So we'll step away. This is Showdown on TV 32. First and 10 from the 37 after the punt. Kiwani takes over. Pick up of about five. Jesse Morales Hernandez with the carry that time had a big carry. A little bit earlier in the ball game, but that one got called back. Well, that last series, we saw Kiwani try to go to the air a little bit more, try to take advantage of that experience from Mitchell Thompson. Right. They certainly did. Like I said, he's got a nice arm. He threw a beautiful pass there, but I still think it was Zorn that prevented that touchdown by getting that hand in there on the left side and knocking away before the receiver had a chance to really tuck it away in the end zone. 
Second and five from the 42. And a gain of four, three to four yards that time. Holding pretty stout out there on the left side, the Keel defense. And third and short coming up. By the way, I didn't mention it, but that was Brad Buckman on that punt who made a really nice hit to prevent any return for Keel. Hey, got to thank uh, all the folks here in Kiwani for the fabulous food spread they put out here. Johnny, I can't believe you haven't even talked about that. Waterfront Bar and Grill, the Bakery Bar Dessert Tray, Connup Meats, Ron's Cheese, Pagel's Family Business, Subway of Kiwani, Piggly Wiggly, and, of course, the Bakery Bar. Bakery Bar, by the way, owned and operated by former Kiwani High School football alum Sam Dowd, class of 2007. Sam knows how to put stuff together. I'm just saying. <laughs> Delicious. Legendary. Jesse Morales Hernandez. Enough for the first down that time. That'll move the change. Ball sitting on the 46-yard line. And, of course, we did have Matanke. Yeah. And a couple Sherry of people. Sherry did a from beautiful job with that. Beautiful. Matanke. Sherry was awesome. And Nina and Cameron Moreland both tried it. Walked from away with NBC a smile. 26 from NBC News. 26. Yeah, did they did their live show out here at 5 and here. 6. Appreciate them being here. Thompson to the air, over the middle, has a good ball. Oh, look at that yes, catch. He caught that. My goodness. Stretching out, pulling it in. That was a beautiful throw, and that was a beautiful catch. Peyton Conley. Peyton Conley. What a great job. You won't see a better high school throwing catch than this. Oh, my goodness. That was a clean catch. I don't care if Not, you go with NFL instant replay rules, no matter what. No doubt. He had that ball. No that doubt. That was incredible. That was one of the greatest catches we've seen in a long time. And for the first time tonight, we've got a team inside the Gallagher's Pizza Red Zone, a first and ten Boy, I like on this. the 18-yard line. I like this arm on Mitchell. Throws it effortlessly. He's going to try it again, this time rolling to the left. Looking downfield, will take it himself and using his strength. Tries to fight off the first man who stood there with him. He kind of stood his ground. Got to give credit there to Bryce Gullickson, 5'10", 160-pound sophomore defensive back. He took a wallop from the offensive player. You know, I thought he had a man coming across the middle, to be honest with you. Wow. But look at him. He stayed with it. Got back up. Helped make the tackle. Gutsy play by number five, Bryce Gullickson. Six-yard pickup brings up second and four ball. Sitting on the 12-yard line. Run. Up the middle. Morales again, Hernandez again. Senior running back. Second team all-conference running back a season ago. Doing a nice job in this stint. Didn't get too many carries early. He takes that one down to about the five-yard line. So first and goal. They've got a lot of weapons, Teddy. Kiwani team. Starting to get used to playing together out there. You know, it's, it's always interesting that first game of the season, right. you lose a lot of good leaders, those seniors that graduate the Absolutely. spring before, and now trying to build the team up, build that chemistry. And Kiwani's got a little something going here late in the second quarter. Just under two minutes to go. First and ten from the five-yard line. Morales, Hernandez. Again, spinning, looking for the end way. zone, and he is in. Touchdown Storm. Very, very Determined run that time by that tough running back, Jesse Morales Hernandez. Did a great job taking it straight up the middle, bouncing off some guys, take it in for the score. Watch this, just takes it behind the guard that pulled a little bit, takes it right up the middle. Does a great job with that strength. So 12 and to nothing. Got some other scores for you, Teddy, when you get a chance. And they're going to go for two. Missed the first extra point, obviously. Morales Hernandez same man. stopped that time. So the extra points are no good. The two-point conversion is no good. So it remains 12-0. Kiwani leads Keel. It is halftime between Keel and Kiwani. We've got a very special guest with us for our halftime segment, Mark Houston from Bell & Health joining us once again. Appreciate Bell & Health being a sponsor for Showdown once again. And, Mark, as we get ready, as we get into this season, I guess talking about, you know, preseason exams, that's, that's a big thing right now. 
Yeah, it is. And thanks again for our partnership. You know, I think our biggest thing is pre the preseason exams. Just make sure you're healthy. Make sure your kids are healthy, that they're ready to go for the sports, um, to be ready for, you know, whatever it is, whatever sport it is, whatever season it is. Now, the fall sports are already underway here. I suppose you got to be thinking about the winter sports as well with those exams. Yeah, and, and uh, actually we this week's been a heavy just because some kids have forgotten to get these exams. So, uh, and if your kid's in middle school or youth, get those too. Um, and then, yeah, before you know it, Winter sports will be here, and I don't want to just jump through the whole fall, but it'll be here before you know it. So the biggest thing is just try to get in, see your doctor, uh, see your provider, and just make sure you're all set. You know, athletic training has become such a big part of sports at every single level these days. How much of an improvement is that versus, let's just say, our <laughs> days when, you know, you do a couple of calisthenics and that was it? Yeah, no, John, that's a great point. You know, I think nowadays we're out at schools four or five, six days a week, Right. you know, uh, out here morning, evenings, yep. uh, you know, just trying to make sure that we're there for when they're, they need that care, you know, do they get injured? Is it a little boo-boo? Is it something real serious? And try to get some guidance. That's what we're there for. Yeah, we were talking in, the, in our pregame show, it's kind of nice to kind of feel like it's normal again, getting over COVID for the most part. Of course, COVID shots can still be important for some people, but flu shots are also important this time of the year as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we're still pushing COVID vaccinations, boosters, you know, if we can help keep, you know, keep kids in school, help people stay in businesses. That's what it's all about. You know, uh, we just want to be healthy. And then yeah, down the line, you know, flu shots are going to be right around the corner. They're going to get released probably right after Labor Day. And, uh, you know, we're just, again, trying to, you know, hopefully get keep and get kids safe um, by getting a vaccination, staying healthy. One last quick question for you. Best advice you can give for a young athlete these days that's going into a contact sport like football? I, I think just be prepared, you know, from yeah. flexibility to, um, you know, hydration, nutrition, sleep. You know, ask the questions. It's no longer just, you know, show up on day one and right. hope that you're going to get that starting spot because you may be so far behind, you know, maybe one of your buddies. Mark Husen, <laughs> Bell & Health, thank you so much for joining us again and once again our partnership with uh, Bell & Health. Thank you. All right. Halftime continues after this timeout. This is Showdown. We believe when part of you is injured, we have a part to play. Whether you're injured swinging for the fences or tending the hedges beside them, whether your goal is to play across the pond or star in Swan Lake, whether you're injured building strength or using your strength to build, our part is to provide no-cost injury consults no matter what part hurts. That's right, free of charge. Welcome to the Orthopedic Walk-In Injury Clinic at Bell & Health Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. I love this pizza. Gallagher's Pizza Buffets are back. All you can eat, lunch and dinner. New guidelines to keep you safe. It's the best deal in town. Gallagher's Pizza Buffets. Check our website for hours, locations, and days. Try us. You'll love us too. Wait, how many times do I have to come back? Personal foul. Too many appointments. You should have gone to No Star Dental. Dr. Pete and his team have experience and with today's technology can do more dentistry in just one visit. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental. And dental implants should last a lifetime. Whether you need a single tooth replacement or a full mouth reconstruction, you can get it all done here under one roof. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. Summer is here, and now's your chance to save at McMahon's of Luxembourg. It's our inventory reduction sale. We have over 100 Lazy Boy recliners in stock, and now is the time to add that new sleeper sofa you've been thinking about, plus sectionals, tables, mattresses, and so much more. Immediate pickup is available, or take advantage of our free delivery across Northeast Wisconsin. Come visit our showroom located in downtown Luxembourg today. McMahon's of Luxembourg, where the best home for our furniture is yours. Cobison Buses, now hiring. I'm Dina Noland. I drive for Cobison Buses. Working with Cobison, it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. First day of school for my son. The fact that I get to bring him there and I can just park my bus right on the side and walk in. They don't, they don't mind that. They want you to be there for your family. I've always enjoyed working with kids. The opportunity to transport them in a bus, I enjoy doing it. Visit Cobison.com to apply. Life comes at you fast. Let Simon's help by making your next meal. Topped with our world champion mozzarella and toppings of your choice, delicious pizza goodness is a phone call away. Quality, convenience, and service. That's Simon's Cheese. How about this? What a great way to open up the regular season here. 
Week one on a Thursday night, Kiwani and Keel. Keel with a two-point lead at half. Well, we've got a sideline reporter with us tonight, Ben Boken from NBC26. Tell you what, Ben is one of these embedded reporters for NBC26 these days, working the shoreline here. And I tell you what, Ben, you were in both of these communities this week. Yeah, Ted, you know, one of the things I want to tell you about is the Kiwani storm strength and conditioning efforts that have changed this season. Now, I was at Kiwani High School yesterday. As these players were in the weight room, they've taken a new approach to that weight room. The coaches told me it was a beautiful weight room that was just being underutilized. Up until this season, they've hired and brought on a new strength and conditioning coach. And I talked to them yesterday about their efforts. So let's take a look. When Dwayne Skoletsky took a teaching job at Kiwani High School last year, he also joined the football team as a coach. And right away, he knew there was something he could change. I noticed that there was a need for somebody to kind of be in the weight room. So Skoletsky is spending his first full season in it as a strength and conditioning mentor, teaching players four days a week. I've been told by the other coaches that there has been more kids from the team in here over the last year than it has been in previous years past. With 13 years of experience, his focus is mobility and flexibility. The team implemented yoga after practice to alleviate soreness. I just feel like the kids, they kind of took last year's loss and realized we need to put in more work and a lot of them have. And there's a huge benefit to doing so. The strength and conditioning coach says efforts like these can help prevent injury building bone density for the players. Obviously when they go from five injuries down to two injuries, and it's because you put the time in the off season and kids are ready, it's just, it's a no brainer. Junior linebacker and tight end DeMarto Eccles says it's been life changing. A lot of confidence, like definitely on the field, off the field. Um, definitely improved my gameplay and all that. As the players prepare for week one, Skoletsky says he knows the weight room will pay off. Are we in better shape than we were last year? And and I would have to say yes, the answer is yes. In Kiwani, Ben Boken, NBC 26. Now those weights were pretty heavy yesterday. Uh, put 45 pound plates on both sides and I did it like a pro, impressed the coaches. But we'll be right back here with more Sports Showdown. Back at Kiwani, where the Kiel Raiders, the Kiwani Storm by two points, Ted Stefaniak and John Mino with you for week one of the 2022 high yes. school football season. So wonderful to be back on a beautiful night here in Kiwani. But I'll tell you what, we've got some other great games coming up, don't we, Teddy? Including next week, one of the big rivalries we'll ever find. Looking forward to this rematch. Last year we did that game, remember? We did had half to stop the game. at halftime right. because of the lightning last year. Yeah, so. and then we couldn't finish the next day because the Packers were playing yeah. at the same time. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, it's two really good teams and Pulaski to Pier, Kimberly Appleton North. It was Boy, really Kimberly Appleton North up. last year, those were some of the best games in the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. And some great games. And tonight, John, I know we've been talking about the food here at Kiwani. They always take care of us in the press box. They here. really do. I mean, they just roll out the red carpet for us. Ben's first time here. He's a rookie. What's he eating down there, John? What do you What do you got there, Ben? Explain so, it to me. So this is Matunki, uh -huh. as, as, we, uh, as we've been talking a little bit about during the broadcast. I talked about, I found out what the ingredients are in this concoction well, here. Yeah, well, tell us, Ben. Sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. you got pork cracklings and just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Put that thing in the oven, press it down, put it in the oven for at 400 degrees, mm -hmm. 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, you got Matunki here. But I've been eating it all night here on the sidelines. It is it is pretty tasty. It's about my fifth piece yeah. right now. And, you know, the people here in Kiwani and over the span of this past week being in Kiel, great. The fans have treated me like with so much hospitality. But one of my favorite things here, being here tonight, got to love the football, but this Matunki is really something else. Hey, give us a closer yeah. look at it. Give yeah, us ben, a ben, question for you. What exactly are cracklings? You sound like a you know, very astute observer of crackling. Hey, story, <laughs> what, what are cracklings? You've got to put them on the spot here. What? No, I'm just... <laughs> cracklings. Yeah. Cracklings, you know, uh, to be honest with Where you... Where do you get them I'm, from? I'm not too... Well, you know, I was actually that, at the gas station I mean, is it yesterday. a vegetable or an animal thing? I'm just curious. It, it's an animal thing. It I, is. I, okay. I almost assume. Okay. But I saw them at the gas station last night. And cracklings there. Oh, okay. But, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how common they are, but, you know, I, I lived for the majority of my life in Louisiana, and it's a hit down south. I'll okay. Very good. Thank you, Ben. Very insightful. 
<laughs> ben Bokin. <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, on the crackling. There he goes. And the Matunky. Yes. Delicious. Sherry, again, making the Matunky this year. We appreciate her sharing that with us. And crackling, it, it's basically lard, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 All right. We'll take a timeout. One more timeout before we get things started. In the second half here on a beautiful night in Kiwani, the Raiders of Kiel with a two-point lead. Hey, everybody, get your phones out. Scan that QR code tonight because NBC26 is teaming up with Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin for a day of giving. Watch NBC 26 and TV 32 August 24th. That's Wednesday throughout the day for special stories about how Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin is helping to reduce food insecurity in our communities. For more information or to donate tonight, scan that QR code now or visit NBC26.com. Day of giving. Very nice. So. Getting ready for the start of the second half here. Kiel Kiwani, the Raiders of Kiel with a two-point lead. They trailed 12-0 in this game before a terrific comeback in the last couple of minutes of that second quarter. They t- trailed 6 to nothing, 14 seconds into the season. I mean, that's, <laughs> they did. That was pretty amazing. So they finished strong in the first half. Let's see what happens in the second half. Big, strong run. We're up the middle. Kiel receives Harrison Zorn. the kick. And, of course, Zorn. With that touchdown kind of turned the game around. Didn't it though? I mean, return. Yep. Yeah. They're going to be going into the locker room down. And then just an amazing turnaround. Had a couple of big turnovers. Big first half by Kristen Mons. Hey, no matter who you are, part of you is an athlete. Whether you're a student, a professional, or a recreational athlete, the Bellin Health Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Team provides elite care for everybody. Bellin Health, the official health care partner of Sports Showdown. So first and 10 from the 38, first play from scrimmage in the second half. Connor Benversi, pretty much the way they started the ball game with just a little off-tackle type play, Benversi. He had a lot of carries early on, and then they started changing up the offense a little bit. Gain of about a yard that time. Bring it up to the 39-yard line. Uh, Kiel, second and nine. But Kiel did a nice job, I thought, in that first half kind of changing some things around. All of a sudden, Kiwani was really coming up strong against the run. Then they found some other gaps, started going to the air, had a touchdown called back on a nice play. Yeah, certainly overcame some some big-time adversity. And flags. Was he drawn on? I don't think so. I think he just kind of anticipated the snap that time, to be honest with you. Yep. It's been a relatively clean game from a penalty for a, standpoint. For, and for a first game, <laughs> yeah. no question about it. No, nope, very nice, clean first half. And, you know, like we were talking in the pregame, nothing can simulate a real game. It doesn't matter you have scrimmages, you have practices, all those things, but there's just something about a real game where you really, really have to, like, just suck it all up and play your very best because well, every, every miscue is so magnified now. You don't just run a couple of extra laps or whatever. And your opening kickoff is run back 100 yards <laughs> exactly. for a touchdown against you. Yeah. And, again, you mentioned the cu- uh, touchdown that was called back, and here's a nice run. And a first down for the Raiders here is number really five, nice run. Bryce Gullickson. Another sophomore. I mean, just a lot of kids that some years might be playing JV. Got a nice kick out block right there. Got some help downfield. But how do you react to adversity? I mean, <laughs> there yeah. was a pretty adverse situation there for Keel in that first half. You know what I thought they did? I thought they came back just very matter-of-factly. No panic. No, let's try to get that one back in a hurry. Just played solid football. Kind of got their rhythm because, again, first game you have to really learn some things, get all that timing down. I thought they just did a lot of that, Ted. Then it all paid off in that second quarter. Under the tutelage head coach, David S. Wine in his third season. And here's a... Takedown for loss. Nice play that time. Once again, a great athlete, Mitchell Thompson, coming up making a play. Yeah, Zorn was the ball carrier that time. Loss of four. Pretty good athletes going one-on-one against each other, huh? He's got S. Wine in his third uh, season mm-hmm. with Keel as the head coach, and Randy Charles in his seventh season with Kiwani. Both of these coaches went to the, their respective high schools. Yeah. They're alum. Yep. Yeah. Remember Kenny Flatten here for a lot of yes. years? Great days with him. Some great he teams. Some, he had some amazing teams. Boy, he did. So second and 13 after the loss. Reverse again. Look at this play. 
Big Oh, nice hit. play, though. Once again, Thompson making a big hit. That had the M Mitchell Thompson make another big hit. It's a pretty good game, but I thought this one could break big time. That inside reverse. Yeah, Gussie that time on the carry. Needed a block right there from number 10. He needed one block to get to the outside. So third and seven now. Gussie, the senior. And you talk about him being a weight room guy and, mm -hmm. and a guy that'll lose his voice in practice. So you got to have leaders like you that. got to have guys like that. <laughs> Absolutely you do. No question about it. So third and seven. Sitting on the 39-yard uh, line of the storm. Faust wants to go to the coming. air. And, oh, overthrew. He had his man. Had his man on the flat, had a shot at the first down if he could have made the reception and taken it up the sideline. But heavy pressure that time by Kiwani. I think they blitzed right up the middle because there was pressure right in his face that I don't think he was expecting well, when he looked it, up for his receivers. He never really had a chance to set and fire it right. And Zorn, number 10, was the guy they were trying to get it to. <laughs> you put the ball in his hands. And anything could happen. Yeah. That's right. So good defensive play that time on the part of Kiwani with that call, sending some Extra backers. Well, Looks John, like they're going for you're it, sitting huh? sitting here at fourth and uh, seven. On the 39. 39. Gutsy play. Big play early in the second half. They'll put Trey Bartz on the near sideline. Split wide right. Here comes the pressure. And, I oh, think they, it's offside again. I think it is, too. Yep, offside in this left de defensive end or outside linebacker. That'll get him a few more yards. Yep. So brings up a fourth and about two. And we get the call from Patrick Latour wearing the right a white cap tonight or to the 31 yard line. Or excuse me, 34 yard line. Crew chief. So this S makes it more manageable. Yeah, well it gives it the option of a uh, a running play now. You'd have to think that have not seen Ben Bursey would Bursi, have a shot yeah, at him. Yeah, seen him. haven't seen much of him lately. And don't see him on the no, field Bray, right now. Bryce actually. Gullickson in the backfield. Changing the play here. Delay of game. Yes, it is. Boy, that's the last thing Keel wanted yeah. was a delay of game. But you could tell the quarterback seemed to be changing the play. Yeah, it looked like it. Yeah, it looked like, you know, one of the things I saw with Kiwani is they brought up one of their linebackers right in the gap, almost just right over center to the right side a little bit. And I think after that one pass play where they really had pressure up the middle, I got a feeling the quarterback was audibleizing out of something with the look of that defense. Okay, so we'll try this again. Go back to fourth and fourth seven. Fourth and seven now. Gullickson again in the backfield with Faust. Faust from the shotgun, looks left, and nobody home. Pressure again right up the middle. So that's, you know, what he had seen before did happen as they brought pressure right straight up the middle. Well, step away. This is showdown. First and 10 from the 39 as Kiwani takes over on downs. Doesn't gain much, if anything, on first down. Maybe half a yard or so. We're up second and nine. This kill defense has been tough against the run since about midway through the second quarter. Well, again, both sides of the ball gaining that momentum, gaining that confidence. Learning to play with this group of players. Up the middle again. Yeah, and fighting for yardage just shy, I think, of that first down. Tough run. Jesse Carlson, or excuse me, uh, Owen Carlson that time? Yep, Bryce Gullickson making a stop, and it is enough for a first down. Tough run straight up the middle, just following his blocker on a basic dive. Isolation play. Yeah, Carlson, of course, got this game underway with a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. That was enough for a first, so ball on the 50-yard line. Fresh set of downs, man in motion is Caleb Schaller. Up the middle they go. And carry that time was yeah, Kayvon Zokin. His first carry of the ball game. Man, he was met with a host of white shirts. Colin Gussie, number two, one of the first guys to hit him. That's just your straight dive right there. Zoken's just form tackled by Gussie. Got a little size there for the senior. Mm-hmm. 
Still a gain of two. You know, one thing, Ted, about Kiwani, almost all their quarterback snaps are under center. You don't see that a lot these days. Drops over Chance. the top, has a man and Wow, incomplete. nice play, defensive back. Mm. Great coverage that time. Another nice-looking ball. Harrison Zorn once again making the stop, knocking it away. We've called his name a few Boy, times. Boy, we certainly has. He's done a great offense. job. What a great outside, or great uh, defensive back is. I just love the way this quarterback for Kiwani throws a pass. So just effortless how he just flicks it out there, put it right on the mark. His receiver out there had it for a moment, Jackson Wisnicki. Yep. But a nice job by Zorn once again, knocking it away at the last second. Third and eight. Big play here, trying to keep the drive alive. Under uh, pressure. Take it himself. And go down. It's back to the line of scrimmage, but that's going to bring up about fourth and eight. Didn't really hesitate that time. Nick Mooton was in on the tackle that time for Keel, number 58. So punting situation right now for Kiwani for the Storm. You know, we're talking about the name of this field. Of course, they dedicated it. Don Rabas. Not too long ago, one of the legendary coaches, yes. and of course his son, his grandsons. I mean, just what a family for football. Just incredible. A nice little write-up in his picture here in you the press bet. box. Well deserved. Yes. Legendary sports family here in Kiwani area. So punting situation. Mitchell Thompson, the quarterback, is also the punter and gets a big. Yeah, that's a here boomer. I'll go in the end zone. Up, bounces high and then goes in. So we'll step away. You're watching Showdown on TV 32. Down in Distance is brought to you by Gandrud West Mason Value Center with a no-hassle, no-haggle philosophy it means you get one low price always. Shop GandrudWest.com today. First and 10 from the 20 after the punt. Keel goes back to work. Hand off that time, Bryce Gullickson. The carry, another big hit by number 15, Mitchell Thompson. You know, Thompson is huge for this level. 6'3", about 210. Really strong arm, really good. Great defensive player, strong leg. He's one of those kids this level school, you can just build a team. Or, you know, it's like you got this guy who's going to do about three different things for us. Although I have to be honest with you, Ted, the last game of the year we did last year, Appleton North against Franklin, those were some of the biggest <laughs> football <laughs> players in Franklin high school. Franklin was loaded with was just D1 college talent. It's like, where's that guy going to Syracuse? Where's that? Boston College? Where's that guy? Wisconsin? <laughs> it was like incredible. What a game that was. What though. a game that was. Incredible. Appleton North came up short in that See, one. See, inside reverse again. Colin Gussie. He doesn't gain much, maybe a yard. Well, they've had some success with that misdirection. I think that's the fourth time they've run it tonight, to be honest with you. And I don't think Kiwani is fooled anymore. So they just totally stayed home that time. Gained about a yard, so bring up third and three from their old 27-yard line. Once again, just a beautiful night for football oh. here just to kick off the season. Just gorgeous. Thursday you couldn't draw it up Can better. we get a Thursday and a Friday night high I school football game every week? I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll talk to our director, Kyle, okay. about that. I All think right. he wants to do that. I do, too. Quarterback keeper. Oh, he's hit hard. First. Looked like he had a shot in the Kiwani defense. Just closed on him. It's going to bring up a fourth down. Helmet came off that time. Yeah, he... Fourth and two. Yeah, he's They're going to punt. He's leaving the field. A little shaken up. No. Yeah. Connor Faust. Hopefully he's going to be all right. All right. Leaving the field a little shook it's up. Certainly a punting away. situation here with a fourth and two coming up, sitting on their own 28-yard line. And just Under gets heavy that one away. Pressure. Hartlib is hit, but no, no flag. call. And that one is down. We'll step away one more time here in the third with Keel up by two. So after the punt now, it is Kiwani with the ball. First and 10 on their own 36 once again. On the ground. And again, really no big punches here by either no, team. No, both teams have really done a great job of shutting down 
the run game, at least between tackles. Injured player. And one of the Kiwani right now players is down. It's number 50, Matthew Bader. Who's down there gets helped up by one of the Kiel yeah, players and he, then says, yeah, you know gonna what, stay I'm going to stay so down. We'll bring the trainer out on this one. So the Bellin trainer getting out there to midfield. All right, while they check on him, we'll give a little shout out to our friends over at Simon's Cheese. Of course, tonight's instant replays are brought to you by Simon's Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese. Little shoot. Simon's Cheese, one of my favorite places. Remember the time they brought out that fudge cheese? And, you, of course, your smoke, smoke trout. trout. Gave it to Coach Jones, wasn't it? Yeah, the first he really game. appreciated that. Yeah, exactly. The player is up and walking off under his Which own good. power. Good Matthew to see. Bader, yep. junior. Good to Plays see. both sides of the line. And, by the way, we were mentioning that Connor Faust went to the sideline. looked like he was should up, took his up. And he was down for a while, bent over, but then he got up and started walking around. So, looks like he's okay. So we see what happens here now with Kiwani, second and eight. Their offense has been kind of quiet this second half. Just kind of jabbing at just each other here, jabbing. waiting yeah, for that fourth of, quarter. Yeah, you're right, just jabbing right now. Quarterback draw. Thompson will take it himself and dives, but it's going to be short, just barely short of that first down. Ben Keenbaum. Number 54 making the stop that time. Looked like he had it. Looked like he really had some potential ground. Yeah, I can just see him yeah. reaching out there. Yep. I, I mean, he is about six inches shy right. of the first down. So. That was just really a nice job of the linebacker coming up and making that stop. So third and inches here. Thank you. Illegal Walker procedure. Move back a little bit. Well, they've had some penalties. They've had two offside penalties and a legal procedure here in the second half. In the first eight minutes. Hmm. So from third and inches. I've noticed if you get a penalty, you come out of the game. <laughs> I've noticed. That. Isn't that the way it worked for you when you were in high school? I never had a penalty. Are you kidding me? <laughs> So uh, I was I was out of the game, but because the guys in stripes told me to go. <laughs> Thompson will take it himself, looking for the first down again. Has it across the 50 and into Keel territory. Well, that's that quarterback draw once again that they ran just a little while ago when he was short. Then the penalty, of course, moved him back. You know, he's such a big, strong quarterback. You have to respect his arm. So you don't really want to bring too many people up front to get in his face. But he just does a nice job, his awareness. You know, he's been a starter for a long time. I don't think he's fooled by anything he sees on defense. Just doing a nice job with his awareness out there. And we talked about the fact that he didn't run a whole lot last season. Right. Couldn't tell looking at him. No, not game. at all. So ball on the 47, and we're going to be quick hitter that time. About to eight yard pickup. Yep. Carlson with the run for about eight. Take it up to the 39 yard line. Just a quick hitter. Just take it right over right guard. Gets tripped up right there by number five, Bryce Gullickson. So second and two, two at minutes, the 39. Two minutes to go here in the third. Need two yards for a first down, ball on the 39. Keep it on the ground again, and Carlson has the first down and more. Well, Kiwani has found something now over that right side. That's a couple of just straight die plays, isolation plays. On that right side, nothing fancy whatsoever, just their basic dive, one of the first plays you ever learn when you play football. But they've gained about 15 yards in these last two plays. So they have found something, exposed something over there on that left side of Keel's defense. Let's see if it continues or Keel's adjusts. First and 10 from the 30. And put a full Long back count in the backfield this time. The lead block. And to the 25-yard line. Jesse Morales-Hernandez with the carry. But you're right, they had the lead blocker in the backfield that time, something you don't see all that often. Kiwani fans having a good time despite the score. Another injured player for Kiwani. 
I think that Bell is Morales. Bell and Trainer will get out there and check on him. He's had a nice ball. It looks like they're working on his ankle yeah. a little bit there. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully he's, he's okay. Yeah. While we're, they're checking on him, we'll tell you a little bit about Lamer's bus line. They're hiring safe and friendly school bus drivers for daily routes and after-school athletics. Lamer's offering increased hourly wages and bonuses up to $2,400 each year. Visit golamers.com slash careers to apply. And Ross Hernandez gets off gets up off the ground and walks off the field without assistant. Always good to see. You know what? Okay, one thing about lamers, okay, as far as can the, can the kids do the uh, start up the bus at yeah. football games? Remember basketball games that was banned or something, wasn't it? The band? The bus. The bus. The bus. The, bus, the kids, the, the yeah. students. Yeah. Can they do start the bus start. at football oh, games? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, I, I, I didn't. I thought maybe it was just basketball games that was banned. That needs to be brought back. <laughs> That was my favorite cheer. Second and five, and a first down and more. Oh, there's number 22 for you. Owen Carlson showing that speed, breaking a couple of tackles, taking it down. Close to the 10. About the 10-yard line. Boy, he looked quick on that play, didn't he? Just hit that hole. Watch this. No hesitation. Takes that toss and just, boom, north and south. Breaks a couple of big tackles. Under a minute to play in the third. Carlson again hurdles a defender looking for the end zone, and he's going to be just shy, just shy. Really running strong right now. This ground game, boy, no huddle. Kiwani, no huddle offense. Back to the line of scrimmage. Carlson again. Dots Quarterback Addis sneak. And Thompson looking for the end zone and has it. Mitchell Thompson on the sneak. What a big drive by Kiwani, and they did absolutely nothing fancy. They just said, you know what? We're going to come straight at you. We're going to put a fullback out there once in a while. We're going to get some good blocking up front. That's what they did, and they drove all the way for a touchdown. Very impressive physical drive by Kiwani that time. A couple of big quarterback draws. There's some big straight dive over behind the guard plays. I'm going to try to get two of them back here. Missed the extra point, and then a two-point conversion in the first half. Put Carlson in motion this time to the right. Mitchell Thompson looking that way and, and has, has his has tight his end. end. Yep. For the two-point conversion, two more points. Sawyer Prebeck will make it 20 to 14. Kiwani with 28 seconds left to go in a fast-paced third quarter. Quite the ball game we got going here, Teddy. Wow. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. But just a very, very impressive Kiwani drive that time. Just a very physical drive. Well, again, you, you talk about momentum and right. confidence. Yeah. You just see it They building. showed it on that one, yep. Yeah. So I guess we're going to be hearing from Ben again shortly. Ben Boken. I believe so. Did not know he's from Louisiana. Lake Shore embedded reporter for yep. NBC 26. Manitowoc County, Kiwani County, this whole area. That would not be a bad beat. Yeah, absolutely. That would be a great beat. <laughs> So anyway, well, the reason the Kiwani people got mad at me that one time years and Why? years ago, Why? I said, what a beautiful night here in Door County. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to uh, repeat that? Oh, did I get the phone calls? <laughs> Thank God that was before, like, social now, media you, You're referring something. to something in the past, right? You're not Way saying that now. Oh you're not gosh. saying that tonight. I was, like, 19. It, it was, sounded like it, you were making a statement tonight. I just, I got my county borders wrong. That happens, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> At least they showed up the right game. All right. <laughs> All right. So we know we've had problems with that before. <laughs> oh, what a roll. Oh, this is trouble. And it hit the and pylon. So it's a touchback. Yeah, it's a touchback then. Wow. <laughs> that could have gone out at about the four-inch line if it take taken one more sideways bounce. Tell you what, I give the player for Kiwani a lot of credit, or for Kiel for not grabbing it and panicking and letting it go. It's kind of like a third baseman with a bunt. Do you let it go or do you, you know, wait to see if it turns? So 27 seconds left to go. Keel now trailing. 20 to 14. Well, I, I don't Haven't think you really need to do anything offensively. You don't need a big play here. I mean, you're no, really you can go back to what the they had the been third. doing. Yeah. Exactly. You bet. But we have seen some big plays. 
Two receivers to the left this time. Keep it on the ground. Mm, and, and that was snuffed out quickly. 78, Braxton Reha. He's made some plays today, and that time he was in the backfield snuffing that one out. Bryce Gullickson with the carry loss of one on the play, and that's probably going to be our last play of the third quarter. Yeah, that was all Ben Versi in the first half, and Gullickson in the backfield for Keel here so far in the third. Heading into the fourth. Third We've got quarter. A good one. Comes to an end. It's a six-point lead now for the hometown team, Kiwani leading Keel. Getting ready to start the fourth quarter. Before we do that, let's check in with our guy, Ben Boken, down on the sideline. He did a little something on the Keel program. Oh, that's right, Ted. I was in Keel earlier this week, Tuesday. I was doing a story on the Keel Football Alumni Association. Now, I interviewed the director. He's also a former player for Keel. And multiple coaches, if not all, actually all of the coaches are affiliated or members with the Keel Football Association. Keel Football Alumni Association. The director told me it's a huge deal. When Keel went to the uh, state title game a few years ago, he said that alumni association probably had a lot to do with that. And so not only that. Yeah, little technical difficulties with Ben's microphone, but I blame it on Ben. It's all Ben's fault. I think no, so. Too. We really appreciate Ben from NBC 26 being with us on the sideline tonight. Look for Ben and his reports on NBC 26. We'll also have some reports tonight over on uh, here on TV 32 after this game for the 9 o'clock news. I think that's fun having other reporters Absolutely. being involved. I think it's great. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun with that. It was great that it, the entire uh, 6 o'clock news team was here tonight yep. doing their newscast. Cameron, Cameron Morley, yep. 5 and Very 6 cool. o'clock newscast six. live here. Nina Sperano leading the way. Why By not? the way, we've started the fourth quarter here. Yes, we in have. Hawaii in week one with the storm leading by 6. Keel with the ball. Good to see Faust back on the field. Took a pretty big shot last time he was out on the field. Faust looking right side overshoots his man. Yeah, good coverage, and the receiver went down. Trey Bartz, yeah. he went down on the sideline and is still down. Wasn't hit. Hope it's a cramp or something. Kind of looks like it is. Hope so. They're gonna they're gonna check on him. Meanwhile, it is fourth and six, deep in their own territory. So Keel's gonna have to punt here. We've seen a pretty good performance here from Tate Hartlip. Yeah, the punter. What a leg this young man has. Good snap. Pressure oh, coming. Pressure. Nice punt. Out of bounds. How about the 42. Looks like. So they will mark this one off. And when we come back, Kiwani will have the ball. This is showdown on TV 32. Ted Stefaniak, John Mino with you. 442 remaining here in the fourth quarter in a terrific game between Keel and Kiwani tonight. The season opener on a Thursday night along the lakeshore. Yep. I'll tell you one thing, though. Keel has had a little bit of a knack for a little bit of self-destruction. Earlier in the ball game, they had a touchdown call back from a penalty. And now they had another penalty when they were close for that first down. And now... Kind of a busted play right there. So this is one of the things in the film session. The coaches say, you know, you guys were in this ball game. You guys had a really great shot, and maybe they still will, but you just can't make mistakes at the wrong time. This is a fourth and twelve, or fourth and goal from the twelve. Faust looks right, then turns left, has oh, a man into touchdown. the end zone. Braden April, twelve-yard touchdown strike to the sophomore. Braden April. That was Faust's best throw of the ball game. What an outstanding throw. Put that one on a rope. Just a slant pattern. And going up high is April to make the catch. What an outstanding play by Keel to get back into this ball game at 28-20 right now. Had to have it. Had to have it. Game would have been over. That was huge. Good snap. Extra point. Kick. Is good. Good. Wow, this isn't over yet. We've got a seven-point game with 4.37 to play. Well, <laughs> Kiwani had dominated offensively the first half until, or I mean the second half up until that drive. Yep. They did it early on with just power football, slamming your face, power football. Then when Keel tried to make some adjustments to get that, 
They took advantage of it. Great coaching. They saw what was being opened up because Keel was coming up the way they did. Then the passing game really clicked. Now it's going to be interesting to see what happens because, you know, with 437 left to go, you don't want to make any mistakes. They've turned it over a couple of times, so it's really important for them right now to just get those first downs on the ground, you know, without having to put it in the air, even though they've got such a nice air game. But, you know, the old saying, anything can happen once you put it in the air. So we'll see if that power football can help them close this one out. See what Keel's got coming up. Sheboygan Falls a week from tomorrow, Friday night. Brilliant. Roncalli, Two Rivers, Chilton. Yeah, tough schedule. Kiwani, a bit. Taking on Mineral Point next week before jumping into conference play. Packerland. I always liked the Packerland Conference. I, was, I know it's changed over the years, yeah. and like all conferences have, but there's something about that conference I really liked. So Hartlip now. 437, any trickery here? I don't think so. I think it's just let's play football and may the best team win. Into the, the end zone end for zone. a touchback. Well, and, and I want to go back to that last drive. Timely timeout by the young coach, yes, David Esprit. absolutely. With a fourth and 12 coming up. No question about it. No question about it. And, you know, you think you have to preserve all your timeouts, but if, if the play didn't work, you, you know what they say, why take the timeouts on the bus with you? So that was really good. Great coaching both ways in this yeah. game, hasn't it been? I mean, for a first game of the season, just outstanding. <laughs> this is fun. We've got 437 to figure this one out. So keel has got to get a stop and get the ball back. As they trail by seven. Kiwani just going to try to run this one out and get out of Offside. here with a victory. Yep, jumping number 65 for Keel that time. Jackson Bartz. Tell you one thing, though, I don't know where we're going to be two years from now. Okay. <laughs> It's hard to say. Okay, I don't know where you're going with this, but go ahead. <laughs> I would like to see what some of these sophomores for Keeler are going to be like when they're yeah. seniors. Yeah. Holy cow. I like them as sophomores. Yeah. So ball up to the 25 after the penalty. This will be a first and five. Thompson going, going up deep. top. And is that caught? No, incomplete. Nope, incomplete. Okay. So... <laughs> I, w I will say this. They've got me like if I was coaching against them, I'm befuddled because I'm not expecting what they're doing, which is great, which is what you want in a coach to keep everybody off stride. So second and five. He was looking for single coverage that time. He actually had double. Akil says, hey, that's that's good for us. Absolutely. Stops the, stop the clock. So second and five. Safety's 10 yards deep for Keel. Straight up the middle. Big hole. Big hole. And across the 40. Hernandez to the 50-yard 50 50 line. Wow. Nice run, but phenomenal blocking that time. He wasn't touched until he was tackled. He gets up limping. Morales Hernandez does. But what some nice blocking by the offensive line for Kiwani that time. Over that right side. Watch this hole, Teddy. Look at that. Big 64. Got a big block to start it off. That was Braden Obrey. And Jesse did come off the field. and Right, limping. Second time he's been bagged up here in the yeah. ball game. Owen Carlson does check back in. Remember, he was banged up right in the third quarter. Yep, making a tackle. So first and ten from the 50, Carlson. Carlson. Pick up in about three or four. Inside four minutes to go. Well, now so I, if has you're two timeouts remaining. Right. It's it's pretty close to do or die with this drive, though, mm -hmm. with the way the clock is going. Second and six coming up. Ball on the 45, 46-yard line. Teams have done a better Keel. job of taking care of the ball in the second half. Yeah, no question about it. A couple it. of turnovers in that first half. Right, that were critical. They were devastating to them. So second and six. Carlson met in the well, met in the backfield, but reaches for a yard. Actually, it's Zokin with the carry. Zokin in there. Zokin with the carry. Up. Yep. Zokin, the senior. He comes out of the ball game. Well, so Hernandez does come back in. Hernandez so just in. rotating those running backs now, trying to keep them fresh. 
So huge play here, third and five from the 45. Handoff. A hold. Hernandez. Oh, no, he's going to be short. Short. Well, okay. going to be about a Go. yard short. <laughs> Four down territory, Coach. going to have fourth and yeah. a long one. Yeah. Close yep. to two-yard line. Two, two yards for a first down. You're sitting on your own. Excuse me. The heel. 42. 42. Clock ticking. It's going to be down towards two mm. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Not this is doubt. it. Not a doubt. Yeah. They're going to go for it. So we'll call it fourth and one. And the dive Carlson, Carlson gets it, I believe. He does. First down on the dive by Carlson. Just a quick hitter, nothing fancy. Put his head down, dove for the first down. Big first down for Kiwani. The clock starts back up after they move the chains. There it is, just straight up the middle. Got the block he needed. Thompson will take his time, letting that clock tick down, and Carlson, Carlson. again. Timeout called by Keel and, uh, with 138 left up. to play. He's getting up under his own power pretty much. That's Bryce Gullickson. Boy, a lot of these kids going both ways for the teams, aren't they? I mean, it's incredible. So he makes a big play at offense, and he makes a big play on defense. And like he'll take the timeout then to right. stop the clock. So one left, I believe, right? Ellickson. He'll have one more timeout. One timeout left. With 138. So now you, you've got to create a turnover some, somehow. Yeah, just mathematically, right? He'll take it down to pretty much nothing. Well, you look at Kiwani and the history they've had. 28 playoff appearances, won a state title in 2010, four runner-up appearances. And yeah, remember the they had that the streak there for a long time? Yeah, we, yeah. They, we, they've had quite the, quite the history. Quite the history. Keel, of course, mentioned making it to the state championship game in 2019. Ended up as a runner-up, 15 playoff appearances over their career, no state titles. But, uh, again, eight straight playoff appearances for this program as well, and two really solid programs. It's going to be fun to watch these two teams move through the rest of this regular season. So a second and five from the 33. And Hernandez tied up. And Keel will stop it for the last time. With 133 remaining. So... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so all I'm going to say is yeah. 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 Anything could happen. Let's just put it that way over the next few, few minutes. Make sure the next minute and a half. Hey, John, how about, how about that? I like it. NBC26.com slash showdown. You can find our schedule. Hey, we're archiving the game. So if, if you didn't see this entire game, Check it out. I think tomorrow morning it'll be up and running, but you can watch this entire game. Tomorrow you can go back and look at some of the games from last year. It's all archived on NBC26.com slash showdown. Can you edit out the part where I asked for the diet soda and didn't not, know I was on? No? Okay. Not a chance, Just my checking. Friend. I thought maybe they could that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not talking about Door County. Nope. Not all those things. Okay. All righty then. Yeah, we won't do any of that. All right. Thank you. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Third and six from the 34. 133 remaining. Kiwani has the ball in the lead. Keel needs a stop. Hernandez. Dives, reaches. He's going to be, I think, George, just short. Just by a hair. <laughs> this might be a April measure. with a stop. Can't stop the clock. The time They're out of timeouts. Oh, so and, and actually the spot where the officials came in, they actually move it back by about a yard. So it's a legitimate one. Fourth and one. It's going to move down inside of a minute. Clock continues to run. They'll take it down as far as they can. One minute left to go. Keel can get a stop. They'll have the ball. You have to think quarterback sneak. And they do. And does he have enough? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big first down and... Big quarterback comes behind his offensive lineman, and that's going to be the ball game. Clock will stop. 
just to move the chains and then start back up again. And Kiwani is on their way to a victory tonight. What a great ball game. I'll tell you what, to start off the 2022 season, you couldn't ask for a better matchup than these two teams. Big plays, tough plays, clean football, very few penalties. This was a great way to start the season. And we've only just begun. Man. We'll be in uh, Nina next week. Nina Menasha is Thompson takes a knee, and that is going to do it. Kiwani is going to start the season 1-0 against a very tough Keel squad tonight. Tough and young Keel squad. <laughs> lots and lots of sophomores making some big plays out there. Good things coming for both of these teams. You bet. All right, we'll step away. You're watching Showdown on TV32. Back at Kiwani, what a ball game to open up the 2022 season. Kiwani comes away with a 28 to 21 victory. I got to tell you something, Teddy. If they had stopped them on that fourth down or even third down, made it a little bit longer than a fourth and one, that would have been interesting if Kiel, Kiel had gotten the football back. Because I think what they would have done is gone to their big receiver months. I don't care if he's double teamed or not, make something happen, or go to Zorn on like a crossing pattern where you have a chance to split the defense and take it north and south. That would have been interesting if they had gotten the football one more time. Well, again, I mean, <laughs> all the credit in the world to Keel. When they when they fell behind 6 nothing right. in the first 14 seconds of the game. Yep. <laughs> no panic, just stay with the game. Are you, are you doubting yourself a little bit? Absolutely. You cannot. You cannot, and they did not as they fought back. And actually had the lead by halftime. You know, I think we had a game one time where he convinced herself it was going to be a good game, even though on paper it was going to be a little bit of a mismatch. <laughs> and I think in the opening kickoff, I think they took it back for a touchdown, too, and it was like 42 to nothing at halftime or whatever. Yeah. So I was, I was wondering, oh, is that going to happen again? But that Keel team, I give them all the credit in the world, all these young kids, so many sophomores, it's incredible. But the composure they had against, you know, playing Kiwani at Kiwani, you know, legendary place here, Don Rubbis field and all those sorts of things. I just am very impressed with their composure, the way they played this football game. Really and truly. But you got to give Kiwani credit because when they came out, when they went into the locker room at uh, halftime, okay, they had given up the big touchdown, actually given up two touchdowns, had the turnovers. Keel was going to get the ball to start the second half. I thought one of the biggest segments of that second half was the Kiwani defense early on against Keel, not letting them sort of force any authority on them. They really came out fired up. They shut them down, and then their offense did the exact same thing. Went with power football, slamming it up the middle, and then when Kiwani or when Keel had to adjust to that because they weren't stopping it, then they went to the air with all sorts of success. So they really, Kiwani really changed this football game by the way their defense played early in that second half. Yeah, and you're, you're seeing the uh, the. the post-game meeting with the team for for keel right now and shouldn't be holding their heads down at not all at all that one that was that was a terrific performance for a young team and of course now looking at the kiwani squad they came in with some experience the right. defending champs right in the packerland conference they've got a lot to they want to prove a lot they've lost some really good players from last season to graduation now you've got a fresh new team and what a way to come out and beat a team that's beaten you the last two times you've played them. Yeah, no question in the world, but I think Kiwani, you know, they've had so much pride in their program. I mean, they just really do. They've been so, you know, top dogs for so many years. When these kids come into the program, they know where that level is. They know where that bar is set. You just can't come up there. You can't be lackadaisical in practice or make mistakes or things like that, or you won't play. If you don't put in your time right now in the, in the uh, weight room, you won't play. I mean, it's just one of those things where that bar is set so high for this program over the years that they know exactly what they have to do, not just to win football games, but just to get on the field. Yeah, without a doubt. And uh, we appreciate you watching tonight. Of course, the, the 9 o'clock news is, is coming up here in, in a few minutes, so we'll, uh, we'll get you to that in just a few moments. And also, don't forget about NBC 26, News at 10. Of course, flip over there later. Brandon Kennard will have highlights from other games in the area. Again, Thursday night. Yeah, I'm trying to get some other games, trying to get my ace reporter to send me some other games. We had some halftime scores, but I'm just waiting for some other uh, finals to come through. So I'll let you know if we get those yeah. at halftime. Next week, of course, Nina and Nasha, which has been a great series over the years and in every sport that they play. Great basketball games years past, football games, you name it. 
just a great rivalry between Nina and Menasha. And last year, of course, we had that game stopped at halftime. When, then Menasha went to the state semifinals, I think it was, and I yeah. believe it knocked off by Rice Lake. They had just an outstanding football team. Yeah. Remember the running back that just went crazy? He had about 350 yards against Notre Dame in the first half of that playoff game we did at Calder Stadium. Yeah, Menasha's loaded again. We'll talk about them in, in just a moment here, but let's go back and take a look at some of those highlights from this game and and john again it started <laughs> you can from, see how bright from it is the kick. <laughs> you can see how the sun is still shining this is the opening kickoff opening dude. kickoff great kick but a really strong look at back foot goes right on the goal line owen carlson and owen carlson does the rest breaks the tackle there gets a good block right there kicker's not going to get him and just sprints down that sideline for a 100 yard i don't know if that's what they're saying officially but that's what i'm calling it since his foot was on the goal line to me that's 100 yards yeah Plain and simple. Missed so, the extra point, so it was yep. six nothing. Kiwani, Kiwani, again, late in the second quarter. What an incredible catch! That was just absolutely incredible. Just a nice job. You know they made so many big plays in this ball game. Jesse and Morales Hernandez, so, yep. five yard touchdown run. Ran hard, came in a relief of Carlson. He got knocked up, knocked out a little bit. Conversion a times, was yeah. no good that time, so it was twelve and nothing. And Kiwani was in control late. I mean, oh, under no two question. minutes to go in the first half. And we thought, wow, it's, Keel's really good going to the uh, locker room. Yeah, the with ensuing their, kickoff after that down. touchdown. Right here we go. This is Harrison Zorn. What a play! What a ball game this kid had. Again, only a sophomore. You're not going to catch him. 80 yards on the kickoff return for Keel, their first points of the game, and that made it 12-7, uh, and we weren't done. We weren't done in the first, <laughs> in the first half. half. We got a lot more happening here. <laughs> Faust says, let me throw it to this guy right here and see if he can out jump anybody, everybody, and he does. That's his 6'4 receiver, Grant Munns, goes up, makes the catch. So we got a ball game going here. Kiwani comes back. Of course, they need some first downs. They need some big first downs, and they got it, and I'll tell you what, it's a big win for those guys from Kiwani tonight, 28-21 over Kiel. All right, we'll uh, come back, get you ready for next week. You're watching Showdown on TV32. Seven-point win for Kiwani over Kiel in week one of the high school football season. Of course, we mentioned it earlier. We've got a day of giving coming up on NBC 26. That's coming up next Wednesday. Click on that uh, website we've got there for you or the QR code. Get your phones out. NBC 26 is teaming up with Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin for a day of giving. Watch NBC 26 and TV 32 on August 24th. That's Wednesday. Throughout the day, we'll have special stories about how Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin helps reduce food insecurity in our local communities. For more information or to donate right now, scan that QR code or visit NBC26.com slash Day of Giving. Did a project with them about a month ago yeah. in the Appleton area. Just yeah. phenomenal. You know, I work for a place with a lot of veteran residents, yes. and they brought over five pallets of food that have been donated. Those guys, it was like Christmas morning. We had everything set up, all the different things on the different table. And I said, you know what, everybody, let's start off with three grocery bags full and then see how much we have. Yeah. And it was just amazing. That's we had enough awesome. for a week. Those veterans, and it, the other day somebody wanted to donate something, said, my cupboards are so full, I can't fit anything <laughs> in go. it. So Feeding America, thank you. They, they've just That's just a wonderful, wonderful organization that helps a lot of people that could use a little bit of a helping hand. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know talking to some of the folks over there, for a dollar you you donate, they can they can convert it basically into yep, four meals. So that's right. Kind of buying power. You're so, exactly correct. So hopefully you can join us, make a donation either tonight or of course on Wednesday, August 24th. Hey, big game coming up week two, a week from tomorrow. We'll be back yes. to our Friday night schedule, John. We are down in the valley for the rematch between Menasha and Nina. We've had some great games in both of those locations. Calder Stadium, though, one of my all-time favorite stadiums. Just love that place. All right. So hopefully you can join us. For that game, next Friday, a week from tomorrow, 7 o'clock is our broadcast time. Hope you can join us then. Once again, the final in week one, Kiwani knocks off Kiel, 28-21. Thanks for watching, everyone. For John Mino, I'm Ted Stefanik. We'll see you next week live from Nina. Ellen Health, elite care for everybody. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, Irish spirit. McMahon's of Luxembourg, where the best home for our furniture is yours. Cobison Buses, family pride in every ride. North Star Dental Group, 
changing your life by changing your smile. Gaindred on West Mason. One low price, always. And Simon's Specialty Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese. Keeping you connected in Northeast Wisconsin from NBC 26. This is My News at 9. Good evening to you. Thank you for watching. I'm John Erickson. On this first week of Sports Showdown, tonight we want to bring you a special edition of My News at 9. We begin with a story from NBC 26's Ben Boken, who talked to the new Kiwani football strength and conditioning coach about how their team is putting a focus on their work off the field. When Dwayne Skoletsky took a teaching job at Kiwani High School last year, he also joined the football team as a coach, and right away he knew there was something he could change. I noticed that there was a need for somebody to kind of be in the weight room. So Skoletsky is spending his first full season in it as a strength and conditioning mentor, teaching players four days a week. I've been told by the other coaches that there has been more kids from the team in here over the last year than it has been in previous years past. With 13 years of experience, his focus is mobility and flexibility. The team implemented yoga after practice to alleviate soreness. I just feel like the kids, they kind of took last year's loss and realized we need to put in more work and a lot of them have. And there's a huge benefit to doing so. The strength and conditioning coach says efforts like these can help prevent injury, building bone density for the players. Obviously when they go from five injuries down to two injuries, and it's because you put the time in the offseason and kids are ready, it's just, it's a no-brainer. Junior linebacker and tight end DeMarto Eccles says it's been life-changing. A lot of confidence, like definitely on the field, off the field. Um, Definitely improved my gameplay and all that. As the players prepare for week one, Skoletsky says he knows the weight room will pay off. Are we in better shape than we were last year? And, and I would have to say yes, the answer is yes. In Kiwani, Ben Boken, NBC 26. And because the Lakeshore is Ben's neighborhood, he also took us to Kiel, where in a city of under 4,000 people, football is a big part of the community. And one association of about seven people is playing a big role in keeping the interest high. Ben spoke with the Kiel Football Alumni Association about what it's doing to make sure the sport stays alive for generations. As a former Kiel football player himself, David Myers says he started the Alumni Association so he could keep playing. Our goal was to play alumni football, have a tackle game, have some fun, have some buddies. Um, it ended up being much more. After over 2,000 spectators attended, Meyer says the Kiel Football Alumni Association was born over 20 years ago. We've raised probably over $160,000, and the majority of that has already been given back to the community through our, our youth program and our high school program. Gathering money from sponsors and former students, the association now does a golf outing instead. Through our playing the football games, playing the, uh, or having the golf outing, having youth football, I think we've invigorated Keel. Assistant coach and association member Jay Binversi says their work has prompted more volunteers and coaches to help. And every year the association honors a special fan. We make sure that the football players come to the outing, they have to wear their jerseys, and the reason we do that is so that uh, they get to feel part of the family and, and, and understand uh, it's a fraternity. And he says some items like helmets cost around $400. We need extra funding in order, in order for the kids to have the safe equipment to play football. The KFAA also sparked a youth football program that's garnered more interest in the sport. Kids that play in high school, they must have a good football experience as a youth. And if they don't, they're not playing in high school. As Keel prepares for their first game this week. They're not just doing this for himself. They're doing it for the whole entire community. The program has is, is really engulfed the community and really engulfed the parents as part of the program. And I think that's what makes Keel special. In Keel, Ben Boken, NBC 26. And from high school football to the NFL, this time of year offers Packers fans a chance to get an up-close look at the players. And for the youngest fans, it can be the thrill of a lifetime. NBC26's Chris Lemo brought us a story of a young girl from De Pere whose special gift for the players has received a lot of attention. Go, pack, go! Even for the youngest fans, pride for the green and gold runs deep this time of year. And for two-and-a-half-year-old Aria, that pride has gone viral. <laughs> we had not intended on bringing the tea set to training camp, but it was a brand-new tea set she had just got, and I let her bring it in the car, and she thought she needed to bring it for sure. 
a cute moment that almost wasn't. We sat down with Aria for our own cup of tea to hear the story behind the viral video. Aria didn't just bring the tea set for play, she meant business. And we just thought, oh, that would be funny that she's just saying, I'm gonna serve some tea to the Packers, and then she realized that they weren't hearing her. Aria didn't get discouraged. She kept at it each time the players walked by. After one player stopped, the reviews were in and the players said it was the best tea they've had. Having large professional athletes walk up to you as a two-year-old can be pretty daunting. But once she figured out that they were gonna join in the tea party, there was no fear. When Aria gets older, she'll get to look back on this unique experience, but for now... It's fun to have a tea party with someone besides her mom. In Green Bay, Chris Lemo, NBC26. A memorable tea party indeed. Well, can you imagine driving around town in this Packers party bus? It recently went on the market, so I went to the UP to ask the owner, whose game day nickname is King of the North, why he decided to sell it. His jersey says King of the North, but this bus doesn't have to say anything for you to know that Jason is a Packers super fan. Being a Packer fan has been a big part of my life ever since I've been young. You know, I can remember two, three years old cheering for the Packers. His bus is called the Big Cheese. He bought it last year, and it's built to be social. You got seating for 14 in here. You got all the bells and whistles of any Packer fan, usually your man cave, you know, mine just happens to be mobile. And he's not the first person to take that bus on the road. The 1990 bus purchased it from a brother, brother-in-law duo down in Green Bay last year. Uh, they, they had used it for tailgates for about 25 years. After he bought it, he ran a designated driver program. He lives in Menominee County, Michigan, so he took fans from the UP to Lambeau. I filled up all last year. I also do weddings and bachelor parties and things like that. But part of being a king is having a family. My son is getting ready to start college in two years, so I'm trying to eliminate some of my expenses and overhead and stuff and try to build something for him so he can have it a few years from now. Yes, even with a bus that's as cool as it gets, this super fan is ready to sell. Jason says that as king of the north, he's really hoping to be able to make it over to England this fall when the Packers have their game in London. He says there's a much better chance of him being able to make that trip if he sells the bus. If I have some left over, I definitely want to take my son and I to that game. And that game could be another Packers story for Mercier in a life that already has seen so many. In Menominee County, Michigan, John Erickson, NBC 26 News. So many memories you can see on that bus. It is time for a quick break here, but when we come back, her name is Vera, and NBC 26's Valerie Juarez shows us how a community whose hearts have been touched are coming together to try to make this little girl's dreams come true. We'll be right back. In Peshtigo, community members and strangers alike are rallying to help a two-year-old girl's last big wish come true. NBC26's Valerie Juarez reports. Loved ones describe two-year-old Vega as a sweet little girl full of life and happiness. She is smiley and just... Uh, she's just Vega. She finds joy in every day. But beneath that joy is a struggle she's battled almost her entire life. The Peshtigo toddler has been fighting leukemia since she was just 16 months old. Since December 13th, we have been at um, Children's Hospital in Milwaukee. Um, and we've had less than 10 days at home it's, since then. After exhausting options and treatment plans, Vega's parents were faced with a difficult decision to bring their little girl home and surround her with loved ones. Nothing has shown to be successful enough, so we have decided to take Vega out of a hospital because um, no kid belongs in a hospital for that long. With her days numbered on Earth, Vega's family hoped to pack a lifetime of happiness in a short window. And with the help from this GoFundMe page that raised more than $10,000 in just one day, Vega is headed to Disney World. The hospital is not magical by any means, so we've always just promised Vega that someday we will go to the mag most magical place on Earth. And we, one way or another, we would get her there. The family leaves Thursday. And grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins are all joining Vega to be part of this very special memory. It's exciting. 
<laughs> this is something that we can be excited about in the moment. A time to smile, unwind, and live life to the fullest. In Peshtigo, Valerie Juarez, NBC 26. A 90-year-old piece of Nina history was left tarnished and vandalized. That's in NBC 26's Olivia Acres neighborhood. Tonight she shows us why it's a group's mission to make sure that piece of history is not forgotten. In Doty Park sits a mystery monument. I've always seen the star on the rock. Ron Klatt couldn't get it out of his head. And I thought, how'd that star get here? And why is that star here? What does it represent? So Klatt, the vice president of the Doty Island Development Council, took the initiative to find out what the star meant. Finally, I decided to contact the Nina Historical Society, and they did research and found out that it was about Thaddeus Sheeran, uh, who was the oldest living Civil War uh, soldier uh, when they did the dedication in 1933. In the years that followed, the Star Monument was vandalized and left in poor shape. Then, Klatt took the initiative again, this time to give it new life. Got some paint remover and removed all the paint, and so that part of the star was refurbished. One of the first of many steps to honor the nearly forgotten veteran. We wanted to make sure that the story was kept and remembered and that it wasn't just a star. And today, with collaboration from throughout the city, the monument has been restored to the condition it deserves. We all work together and this is the product. All of these entities worked together to ensure that Thaddeus' memory would never be forgotten again. There is now a repaired star monument in Doty Park and beside it, a new monument telling his story. In Nina, Olivia Acri, NBC 26. More than 100 pilots and their hyper-realistic model planes are in Fond du Lac today for the start of what's called Warbirds and Classics over the Midwest. NBC26's Margaret Cahill takes us into the action. It's the sound that filled the Fond du Lac air today. The sound made by the model airplanes featured in this year's four-day event. Some people spend years doing this uh, on a single airplane. Uh, some guys can build two or three in a winter. Opie Logue from Minnesota is a member of the flying group Toad Air. He says this week is a chance for aviation hobbyists to connect and learn more about aviation history. You know, the Flying Tigers, for instance, the P-40s here, we flew as essentially mercenaries in, uh, before we entered the war in World War II. Just a sliver of the history shown at this 15-year-old event. It covers everything from the start of aviation through modern uh, fighter jets today. In here. Event organizers say it is a great destination for families. If we, yeah, if we go to Grandma and Grandpa's house, they're usually rearranging airplanes, and I mean, he'll get them involved, and they go, they'll get to glue stuff and hold stuff for them. And, and for Chris Gertis and his two sons, Jacob and Marcus, aviation is a family affair. Me and Grandpa would just hand them a transmitter once in a while, and here they are. <laughs> Four feet taller and... 14-year-old Jacob Gertis says he learned one valuable piece of advice from his dad and Grandpa. Never give up. You crash one, just don't get all mad about it. Just an airplane. It's going to happen. The event features flying demonstrations, food, and other activities throughout the week. You can check out more info on our website, NBC26.com. In Fond du Lac, I'm Margaret Cahill, NBC26. An interest in beekeeping is creating quite the buzz, if you will, here in Northeast Wisconsin. NBC26's Chris Lemo has a story of one mother-daughter duo who have cashed in on the recent trend. Maple Sweet Dairy in De Pere has been around for decades. It's made it through many different trends and changes, but one was just too sweet to pass up. It started as more of a hobby and then we've grown to love it even more and trying to figure out what works every year with the bees, uh, because some years the bees need different things. So it's kind of like a puzzle to figure out every year what works and what doesn't. A puzzle that works to make the bees happy because a happy hive means an easier job for the family. But instead, this year we used an escape, and then the bees go into that escape and they can't get back out. So that's a different technique that we use that made it a lot easier to extract the honey from the hives. After the boxes get taken off the farm, that's when the hard work begins. The boxes are transported back here to the processing room where the frames are scraped, and that's how the honey is removed from the wax and eventually gets put into these bottles here for consumption. And those bottles have been selling well. 
Teresa attributes a rise in sales to the explosion in popularity for honey-based products. But the catch is, that's led to a shortage of supplies. Use of honey has gone up more and more because people want local honey. So we were not producing enough for what we were selling, so we decided to add on to the extra hives. So why the sudden increase in interest for beekeeping and homemade honey? A lot of people are into local honey for allergies and stuff. And Raw honey like the Barone family makes is increasingly seen as a natural remedy. And you can't forget the taste. So whether for eating or for allergies, the additional hives and honey production have the Barones busy as a bee. In De Pere, Chris Lemo, NBC26. And finally tonight, the annual Team Hope Walk and Run returned to Nina for its seventh year. The goal is to raise awareness for a little-known disease. NBC26's Olivia Acri was there and shows us what the walk meant to the community. I am here to help raise funds for a little-known disease called Huntington's disease. The Huntington's Disease Society of America's Wisconsin chapter held a walk run in Nina this morning. Just something that uh, affected me personally. Uh, my wife had it and she passed away earlier this year. All to help raise funds and awareness in hopes of finding a cure. People from all over who have been affected by the disease came to walk, run, gather with other families. And kind of have a day where they don't worry about Huntington's and can feel very, very hopeful about the future and hopefully finding a cure someday. The fatal disease affects a person's physical and mental abilities. My mother was diagnosed with Huntington's when I was six years old and the way I coped was by volunteering. Every child of a parent with Huntington's disease has a 50-50 chance of inheriting the gene. I did test negative for the disease, but this has become my life passion. One volunteer shares why he keeps coming back. What makes it really special is just, you know, talking with them and hearing their stories. I mean, it's just an amazing thing to be a part of. For these families, crossing that finish line means so much more. They are doing something um, to help, help find a cure for Huntington's disease. A bit of relief, a bit of excitement, a bit of hope um, as they cross that finish line. As families and friends cross today's finish line, they told me they are proud to get to raise awareness to Huntington's disease. In Nina, Olivia Acri, NBC 26. And we thank you for watching My News at 9 and hope to see you right back here tomorrow night. I'm John Erickson. Good night.